You are listening to the Doug Hagman Radio Show, weekdays 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And now the man behind the mic, a private investigator with over 30 years under his belt, Doug Hagman. Good morning, everyone. It's 6 a.m. on the West Coast of America, 9 a.m. here in the East. Welcome to Hagman. It's the Doug Hagman Investigative Hour for today, Thursday, August 23rd, 2018. It's day number 581, 581 of the Donald J. Trump presidency and 464, day 464 of the special counsel's uh, renegade rogue witch hunt this attempt to take down a duly elected president. I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for your belief in my show, the Doug Hagman Radio Show, Doug Hagman Investigative Hour. Thanks for uh, supporting what we do, by the way. And uh, I would urge everyone, please, listening to this broadcast, please, things are getting to, to, to such a point where the t- t- tomorrow is not guaranteed to anyone, obviously. Tomorrow in the digital realm is certainly not guaranteed to anyone, and that includes us, and especially us. So do me two favors. Number one, bookmark HagmanReport.com and begin checking it regularly. The reason for this, I do have reports of investigation. I've said this before, but I'm, I'm, it's even truer now, right? Um, I, need to, I need to post some, uh, some investigative uh, reports up there. Things that I've done that I've not talked about, but I've been in the background, uh, investigations do, I've been doing, and uh, suffer from everything else that have consequences to what we're seeing happen today, including but not limited to the debunked conspiracy theory Pizzagate, right? Yep, it's, oh yeah, that's nothing there. And I'm going to be getting more into the players of... Um, well, Pizzagate, Pedagate, and the players, those are the, the, the individuals who are responsible, ultimately responsible for the takedown, the censorship, the banning, the social network uh, pollution and corruption in, in the attempt to silence the people who have the goods. Now, that's part of what this is all about. But to do two things for me. Number one, bookmark, uh, as I said, bookmark HagmanReport.com. But secondly, again, I, I will remind you, please sign up for our newsletter. If you go to the main page, right underneath the header is the sign up for the newsletter. It's going to ask you for your email address, first and last name. Seriously, first and last name, not that important. If you want to put Joe Smith there, that's fine. You, you know, it, it's... But understand this. Ultimately, we are going to, and I'm preparing for the day where we are going to go back to a system of a much simpler system, where you don't have, you won't have to go to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Facebook <coughs> Live Radio No Cough Button, right? Uh, you won't have to go to Facebook or, or Twitter uh, to, to, and, and search or try to find us via Google, which has been totally compromised. It's all, it really always has been manipulated and such. You'll have it. Uh, if we have important news to pass along to you, you'll, you'll get it right away through this newsletter. It's not really a newsletter. It's just a news pipeline of only, and we've only sent, I think, one, if I'm if I'm correct, I, th- I think we, we've only sent one, maybe two, but one uh, notification since we began this and there are folks there are a lot of people signing up for this and i mean a lot so um it it, by the way it gives us a a better idea too of our audience reach and if this is any indication i'm just blown away so thank you for that so just two two things and by the way thank you for supporting us you have allowed us and, and i'm just very quickly, you've, you've allowed us to pay for the bandwidth it takes so we can broadcast on our own, independent of YouTube, independent of, of any other platform. We can broadcast on our own, much like a, oh, I don't know, a television station would. You can catch our broadcast every night. Simply go to HagmanReport.com and uh, 
It should be right there. If not, it's on the watch page. So that's the deal. And I want to thank you for allowing us to do that. Because what's coming down the road here, and this is what this program is all about, this episode that is, we are, in, we are now engaged in a fight that will define you. Where you stand in the fight today will define you. I don't want to go all philosophical on you, but I'm going to tell you right now. Um, you, you know, I, I look toward people I, I've never met but consider my friends. Walter, Kevin, driving, driving up and down, you know, working his butt off every day. And, and I think to myself, you know, these are some true patriots. I'm not the patriot. I mean, I, I, it, it's admittedly, it's easy in a sense for me to sit here and talk. That's the easy part. What's the more difficult part is when the microphone gets turned off and the show is over or the show hasn't begun yet. What what am I doing to advance the fight, to advance our position in the fight in which we find ourselves today? That's what defines me and that's what defines all of us. Uh, We are headed for some Well, I'll just say it this way. What you see today is going to get much worse. So prepare yourself. Don't delude yourself into thinking that the things are going to get better. No, things are going to get much, much worse before they get better. And there will be no spectators in the fight. You cannot, if you choose to be a spectator, you've chosen your side. I'm not going to call out people by name or websites by name. I'm not going to do that. But I look at these pious, self-righteous websites who hide behind the cloak of this of, of Christian mindset. And, and this is not an indictment of Christianity because I'm a Christian. And, and, I, I, and I know millionaires and billionaires that follow certain websites. The, the websites that, oh, gee, shucks, oh, golly, gee. I'm just a guy trying to advance the kingdom. Well, you know what? You, you ain't got any skin in the game. Yeah, And you refuse to put skin in the game. Is that what God wants? You to be some sort of just commentator from the sidelines? And pray about it? Look, I, please understand what I'm saying. You can pray about it, and please do pray about it. Because I hit my knees every morning, every night, and every chance I get, I hit my knees. I pray about things. I pray for the listeners. I pray for the show. I pray for our country. I pray for our president. I pray for my family. I mean, you know, believe me, I am a Christian. But... If you're not engaged in the fight, what good are you? I'm just saying. And I know, I know there are people out there with websites that, that will, oh, look at this. L- look what Doug Hagman did. Hmm. Oh, look at this. Look what, uh, I, I don't throw a name, S- Steve Quayle did. They're really not good Christians. Oh, look at this! Look who look who Doug Hagman on and Joe Hagman on, had on their show. Hmm. Yeah. What an empty life. But see, it's not about me. Because the same could be said about you, and probably would be said about you, given. Uh, if 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 they if somebody looked at your at your life because there's, they can always find fault. The reason I'm I'm saying this right now is because the fight, your position in this fight that's that we see today, will define you, 
and will impact your children and every generation henceforth in the United States of America. You only have to turn your eyes to Venezuela. You only have to turn your eyes right now to South Africa to understand that inaction, acquiescence to this rogue, unfortunate, um, well, this criminal behavior, turning a blind eye to this criminal behavior, or, or just commenting or opining about it, or opining about those who are engaged but doing it wrong. That's going to that's gonna be your legacy, not to my listeners, but your legacy to the people that, that squawk about it. Good job. This, the, where you stand in today's fight will define you. I was listening to Dan Bongino yesterday, this program yesterday, as I was doing some, actually doing some uh, important, well, I was doing, doing some errands, and actually um, I, I had met with a uh, detective. It, it, anyway, um, I, I had spent some down, well, down time. I had spent some, uh, I'll just say surveillance time. I, I, I guess there's no way... I guess I have to admit that. Looking at something, and uh, so I, I flipped on Dan Bongino's podcast, and I was listening to him, and and that was yesterday. That was what Wednesday. So he was talking about the events. I think of the previous day, Tuesday, the Manafort and Cohen business. Did that break Tuesday? I guess it did break Tuesday, right? And and he said, admittedly, it was a bad day. Uh, however. However, he said, I'm tired of getting emails from people. Well, I give up. I give up, basically. And, and he said something. It was just a really quick comment. Stop it because you're getting in my head. And th- isn't that contagious in, in a sense? The, um, did, yeah, it's contagious. You're bringing me down, man. <laughs> okay. But, but it, it is. When you've got a sense of defeat before your feet hit the floor in the morning or at, right afterwards, that's a bad place to be. So let's make one thing clear right now. It is the objective of, and I just, I know you're tired of hearing this, but we got to keep going through this. It is the objective of the globalist left that involves Republicans and Democrats, if you want to call them that, or Republicans and the communists more appropriately, or the uh, rhinos, the Republicans in name only, or the globalists and the communists, one and the same, I suppose, the uniparty. It is the goal of, 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 of the permanent state to impeach Donald Trump because he was not part of the club. He was not a member of their, of their club when he assumed office. No one thought he would win, as you've, right? They got to they gotta get him out of there. He's, he's, doing, he's undoing everything Obama did. Look at, at the regulations that, uh, that, he, that he has overturned, especially about the cars. Have you heard about that? Oh no, you're not going to hear about this in the in the news. Uh, yeah, he overturns certain uh, environmental regulations. I, I believe it's uh, CAFE is the acronym. You can look it up, but it, it's got to do with fuel economy, corporate uh, average fuel economy, or something uh, from memory. But but uh, some pretty severe restrictions that would have caused severe economic damage had the the Obama. Uh, the regulations have been allowed to go into effect. Donald Trump overturned those. And by doing so, overturned part of the Obama legacy, which just absolutely makes the left's minds explode. I mean, there's blood and tissue everywhere on the walls. But more importantly, dismantling the legacy of the criminality of Obama the legacy of socialism of Obama I love it so it's payback time 
and it's always been payback time since day one, since that, since Donald Trump was confirmed president of the United States and Hillary Clinton refused to concede. So she sent out uh, her whipping puppy dog boy, Johnny Podesta, to say, hey, wait, 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 wait until all the votes are counted. He probably ran from that uh, room as ashtrays and vases were being hurled by the by the witch of Benghazi. But I digress. But ever since then, the left has been engaged in a coordinated attack. And when I say the left, I'm talking about many people on the right as well. And and you know who they are, the Paul Ryans of the world. Uh, I'm not going to get into every name, but you know who they are. They're after, they're after the blood and toil and sweat of every American. They're after, they, they want to make this nation into this communist utopia, as I've said in the past. And, and they're damn well not going to stop, nor should you in your fight against it. If you have any, any sense about you, and I know you do. Well, what can we do? You might ask number of things you can not shut up you can continue to support what's right verbally you can face the censorship and bans and such you can go out there and you can you can you can promote the conservative ideology and agenda and despite the despite that the uh, the, the crap thrown at you, sometimes literally on you, sometimes literally. But here's the deal. And here's what I'm getting at. Because I found some nuggets embedded or nuggets that, that, that were created right after Donald Trump was sworn into office. And we have spoken about this on our show. But the media matters for america it is serving as a nucleus by which a number of other organizations are striking back against the truth tellers the what what happened with uh, donald trump and with and, and just to keep again we have to we have to always uh, pro- provide battle situation assessments in my view anyway you know the message against donald trump or the message to the american people the message to to people who are running or want to run for office you run for office and you're not part of our team you're gonna here's you're gonna get what for and and just look at what donald trump is getting okay we're gonna throw everything at you we're gonna use the weaponized intelligence community and the full resources of the federal government to destroy you, your family, and, and every person, your offspring, for generations to come. That's the message. Now, it's you can say, oh, okay, I'm going to take my bat and ball and go home. Or you can say, you know what? You're going to die trying. So the same thing is happening to the patriot community you can go ahead post your stuff on 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 the internet go ahead we're going to give you the same treatment that we give donald trump i mark my words donald trump will be impeached guarantee it and i'm going to tell you what's going to happen next by the way and it involves involves the ultimate prize or the ultimate maneuver. They're done with, well, they're not quite done, but they've, they've run roughshod over Manafort. Manafort's not a good guy. I mean, look, he's not a good guy. But does he deserve what he's getting? No one could withstand the investigation 
having the full resources of the federal government, a weaponized intelligence community, every agency of, of the government. And I know because I've been in that position at a state level, not at a federal level. Well, a little bit federal, but mostly at a state level. When I did an investigation that uh, resulted in a key nominee, and I've mentioned this before, a key no- not nominee, this is back in the 80s, his resignation from a, a key post in, in one of the one of the state agencies. Good friend of the governor at that time. And uh, I did a background investigative report. Call it an opposition research report. Call it what you want. But when it hit the Senate floor of the uh, the uh, the committee that was going to ver- uh, approve him here in Pennsylvania, he withdrew. And that angered the governor it's, it's so much. I mean, let me tell you something. When you've got an entire state, the the, and I've seen the weaponization of, of state agencies. And, and I survived, let's see, uh, I don't know, 16, 18 months. And I've said this story before. So I know what I'm talking about. And let me tell you, it's not a pleasant it's pretty much like a colonoscopy cleanse every every or colonoscopy pretty much every day figuratively speaking of course all right so imagine imagine manafort and cohen which could, the day that uh, or the incident that, that uh, dan bungino was talking about was the cohen and manafort uh, craziness 18 counts, hung jury on 10, 8 counts on Manafort. Nothing to do with Russia whatsoever. Cohen pleading guilty to a crime that doesn't even exist at the behest of Lanny Davis, that Clinton scumbag. And and why? Because Cohen wants to be a, uh, what is that, Avenetti guy? He wants to be like him. But I digress. But the prize in this case is right now Mueller, this out-of-control scumbag, Mueller. And, and, you know, you can say what you will for his prior service. doesn't give you a free pass to to, uh, do what he's doing right now. But I'm going to tell you, his next target, Donald Trump Jr. And trust me when I tell you, it's going to be over the Trump Tower meeting. It's been, it's, uh, Stone, Stone was talking about this, uh, what, yesterday maybe, a couple of days. I've talked about this before. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, Donald Trump Jr. is going to be the focus and the, the ultimate uh, whipping boy, the redheaded stepchild, where Mueller will go after Donald Trump Jr. And the, and the reason, the pretext, of course, is that Trump Tower meeting this verified by uh, Roger Stone, or at least talked about by Roger Stone. I I didn't listen to what Stone said. I I know he spoke about it. I I, I saw some uh, snippets, quote snippets, but but I can tell you, independent of him, uh, thankfully, the, uh, it's, 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 it's coming to that. So it's splitting the family. This is what Mueller wants to do. Throw the entire resources of the federal government against Donald Trump Jr. That's the intent. The intent, of course, is to get Donald Trump out of office, to impeach him. Now, he can be impeached and stay in office. Impeachment does not equal removal. But what the globalists are hoping for, of course, are two things, or what they're working toward are two things, to silence the media or silence the truthful media independent media, voices like mine, so we can't talk about what their objectives are and what their endgame goals are, and and also to make sure that they prevail in the midterms, because to them, the midterms are everything. So if you want to get in the fight and you want to stay in the fight, what can you do? Well, speak your mind, speak the truth, speak your mind, regardless of whatever censorship may or may not be. Uh, banning and, and such that may or may not be affecting you. Do it over and over. Flood the social networking uh, social networks. But by all means, work toward the 
midterm elections. Now you might not, you might say, well, my vote doesn't matter. And, you know, I, I get the quote from, uh, Mark Twain, a hey, voting matter. I think it was Mark Twain. If votes mattered, uh, they'd make it illegal. They'd make voting illegal. I get that. I understand black box voting, but I'm telling you the, uh, the left, the globalists, the communists are putting, they're all in for the midterms and they will do everything in their power to make sure that the deck is stacked for a midterm uh, victory. So understand this. You've got Robert Mueller, who is a puppet of the deep state, using resources of the government to go after innocent people, to investigate crimes that don't even exist. And when that happens, we have lost our republic and lost our our moral compass. You've got a weaponized Department of Justice. You've got a weaponized, even still, intelligence community at this point. But we're fighting up against this. Now, I here's what I got from others and I, I, I from a few people who know what's going on. It's it's my understanding, and this is based on information given to me. I, I trust the people who are telling me this. When I say people, it's more than one that the objective or the intent is to, uh, to to get rid of Mueller and get rid of Rosenstein. But that's not going to happen until after or right, I mean, like probably right after the midterms. Now think about that. way. Just think about that. We're talking about firing Mueller and Rosenstein. And in addition, issuing pardons as well. Now that's going to, and you might say, well, that's really going to be bad for Donald Trump. Well, wait a second. It's already bad for Donald Trump. And it's only going to get worse for Donald Trump when they go after Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner. They, they, they have every intent of going after Donald Trump Jr. for that Donald Trump meeting. You remember the meeting on, what was it, June 9th, 2016, where Glenn Simpson met with Veselnitskaya, the Russian attorney, before and after the Trump meeting, but denied knowing the Trump meeting was going to happen. And, and of course, you know, the Ors, the Bruce and Nellie Orr, their role in Fusion GPS. And, and where did Fusion GPS come from? Three journalists. Oh, what a, what, just what an admirable uh, profession that is, right? But this is coming down the line. So Cohen pleads guilty to, to a number of offenses, some of which aren't even aren't even crimes at the behest of Lenny Davis. It's insane. And uh, um, Manafort, of course, was found guilty on, on eight of the 18 charges, 10 dismissed, and not nothing was associated or affiliated with Donald Trump at all. And, and of course, speaking of Cohen, you got a hundred thirty thousand dollar payment that was unrelated to a campaign expenditure. It was not paid through campaign funds to deal with that Stormy Daniels deal thing, and the media is misrepresenting that. So, the, the truth, see, the truth about this, and this is why, right now, all of us are are, are being hit now by the banning, by the censorship, by the fight. This is why we're being hit right now. It was in January of 2017, I'll just say this, when David Brock wrote a, what is it, 49-page confidential memo that was obtained by the Washington Free Beacon There was a, and I did speak about this before, and I've spoken about this of, of late, and I, I just had really forgotten about this. There was a retreat at Turnberry Isle Resort in Florida back on J- January 19th, 20th, and 21st of 2017. Democracy Matters. Strategic Plan for Action. Now, from this meeting... Now, follow me here, please. From this meeting, a 49-page uh, pl- 
plan of action was was structured. In this plan of action, under the umbrella of Media Matters, this David Brock organization, David Brock, of course, is the uh, husband or whatever of James Aliphantus of Comet Ping Pong fame and, of course, you know, that they discredited and, and debunked conspiracy theory, right, of Pizzagate. Yeah, these uh, look. I'm not going to get into that. So, Media Matters for America. David Brock had a retreat in Turnberry Island. And the name, of course, is Democracy Matters: Strategic Plan for Action. In this, in this, in this meet or at this meeting, were a number of individuals. But you've got American Bridge for the uh, American Bridge 21st Century crew share blue. So, Media Matters, American Bridge 21st Century Crew, and Share Blue. Now, Andrew Kerr had talked about these organizations, Andrew Kerr, on our show. Did some very good investigative work. Went after Dave Brock. All right. Now, I'm just going to cite from this, because this is so critical, because what they planned in 2017 in January is happening now. They have pulled the the stops, and and here we are. They they said that the progressive infrastructure groups that they've built together, they were started long before Hillary Clinton ran for president. They were always intended to be first, the, the first line of defense and offense when we, they, are under siege. And, and they said, they wrote, if we keep fighting, our groups will last. We will continue to build for the future, and we will win again. We have the mandate. No, they don't. But that's, I digress. It's interesting because he writes that together we won the popular vote, and the Democrats picked uh, up seats in the Senate and the House. Okay, the latter is, is uh, true, but the popular vote, interestingly enough, Kate Daly on our flagship show last night, Question that as well, and saying, you know what? I think once we, if we looked a little closer on that, we that, that might not be true, and I totally agree. I don't believe. Look, outside of the urban or the city centers of New York and Miami and Chicago and places like that, outside of those city centers, real Americans and real America, they're not behind that. The, this globalist socialism mandate. No, they are not. We are not. They didn't win crap. And, and they've got the audacity to say this country did not vote for Trump-style change. Oh, yes, we did. That's why we have Donald Trump sitting in the office. And that's why... Everyone listening to this broadcast, you cannot afford to, to say enough. I've had it. I'm done. Uh, nothing changes. Screw it. I'm, I'm going home. You're in it. You're in it. You can't quit. It's like being the boss. Who, who do you resign? It's, it's like me. Okay. Uh, some days, I, yeah, some days I feel that way. But where do I turn in my resignation? Paper? No one, what? I, I walk away and then what? So don't give up. This country did, in fact, vote for Donald Trump-style change. We're sick and tired of the politics as usual, the Hillary Clinton graft, the crap that that uh, the Clinton campaign, and and the crap that exists in the form of Brock and Elephantus, the gray moral area that 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 they want to push upon us, and the darkness that they want to push upon us. That's not that's not what America is. That's not who we are. And we're going to push back against you if you are listening. And I know you are. I, I'm going to tell you right now. You can you can transcribe this program all you want. Just get this one thing right. I am not backing down. And I can tell you this: a lot of the listeners to this show will not back down. And we will take you on head on if we have to. No, I'm not talking. Violence. That's not. I'm talking politically. I'm talking. I'm, I'm just talking about the 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 intellectual aspect of this. We will take you head on in that in that arena. In the pol- political arena, we'll take you head on. Because sure enough, it, just from my words, they're going to take it out of context. And hey, you're inciting violence. No, no. 
writes David Brock, Trump, no, it's President Trump to you. He has the legal authority, but we have the moral authority. No, you don't. And the moral responsibility to oppose him. Okay, you've got you've got the right because this is America to oppose him, but not the right to weaponize various departments of the government to take him down and overturn the will of the American people. You don't have that right. There is no moral authority for that. None. Nor nor is do you have the moral responsibility. Nor do you have any morals, period. And of course they write, we will fight every day. But that that's just at the entry introduction level. And of course, they're not going to make the same mistakes again. They're going to apply lessons learned. Generally speaking, simply put, Democrats got clobbered in the digital space. Digital programs, tactical and messaging, failed to actively listen and engage the online grass, grassroots of the universe. He writes next, we will fully adapt to the new reality and we will win. And here's how. And this is the synopsis, but it's still not the real, the real agenda. Here's the synopsis. In the next four years, Media Matters will continue its core mission in, of disarming right-wing misinformation while leading the fight against the next generation of conservative disinformation. The proliferation of fake news and propaganda now threatening the country's information ecosystem. Here's what success will look like. This according to David Brock. Serial misinformers and right-wing propagandists inhabiting everything from social media to the highest levels of government will be exposed and discredited. Internet and social media platforms like Google and Facebook will no longer uncritically and without consequence host and enrich fake news sites and propagandists. In other words, if we think you're right of center, you're going to get demonetized. There's no way you're going to make a dime off of the platforms. Now, it's okay for the, the, the communists to make money. It's okay for the Democrats or the socialists to make money. But if you're a conservative... Don't even think about it because we control the switch and we're going to turn it off. Oh, and, and thirdly, toxic alt-right social media fueled harassment campaigns that silence dissent and poison our national dis discourse will be punished and halted. Well, buddy, let me tell you, apparently you're going to have to turn the guns inward. Who's doing the harassment? Who's silencing dissent? Who's poisoning our national discourse? It's you. But they've turned, again, typical, you know, projection. I'm going to turn the guns on you. American Bridge, of course, they will cement their, themselves as a standard bearer of opposition research. So American, th think of this, Media Matters is the umbrella. American Bridge is the standard bearer of opposition research. This is the fusion GPS, the fusion GPS of of the party of the of the communist party in my view they will cement themselves as a standard bearer of opposition research build on its role as a progressive clearinghouse for information that drives the narrative on on, on republican office holders and candidates and be at this epicenter of democrats to re work to regain power beginning now in 2017 and building to 2020 and here's what success will look like Donald Trump will be defeated either through impeachment or at the ballot box. He's going to be a one-term president. And I believe this, look, we're seeing it. We're seeing it right before our very eyes. He's headed for impeachment. He, 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 could, he could cure cancer. And he's still headed for impeachment because he's not one of them. And certainly not representative of, of, of the... All right. The balance of power will shift back to the communists. They say Democrats. I say communists. We will measurably impact U.S. Senate gubernatorial and state legislative races. Okay. What they're saying is we're going to infiltrate all levels of government politics. And we're going to put our own guys in there just to make sure that, that we have everything covered. 
We will also free ourselves from solely relying on the press. Our robust digital program will reach voters directly online. In other words, we have control over the social media and we will exert that control. Why do you think it was so coordinated to take Alex Jones off the air? Now, again, I understand when I say Alex Jones, I understand Proud Boys. I understand so many others before and after have are part of that. But Alex Jones is the poster person for this, I believe. And this was a coordinated attack, and, and a message was sent. You, look, you had 2.4 million subscribers on YouTube. All of the intellectual property under his uh, under, under that was wiped out. And you may tire of hearing about this. But it happened, uh, to, look, we were banned, and we were, look, a little bit of information. We were told, after after we spoke of the uh, our supposed alleged violation of community standards on, a, on, a, on one of the most, on, on the tame program where we intellectually discussed historical matters, that it's really not about what you did. It's about what you represent and your days are numbered. That's what what I was told from someone who knows what's going on. Thanks to you, of course, we're able to talk, to uh, act independently of these, of these fascist, fascist book and, and other social network programs because of the left, as they said back in January, of 2017, we will control these platforms. In fact, we're going to control what you see, what you hear, what you read. And we're going to do it so a Donald Trump presidency at any level will never, ever happen again. Now, crew. Listen to this. Crew will be the leading nonpartisan ethics watchdog group in a period of crisis with a president and administration that present possible conflicts of interest and ethical problems uh, on an unprecedented scale. Really? Really? You want to talk about... Do you want to talk about conflicts of interest and ethical problems? Two words, Clinton Foundation. Anyway, a crew will demand ethical conduct from the administration and all parts of government, expose imp- improper influence from powerful interests, and ensure accountability. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but here's what's really telling. Here's what success will look like, this according to Crew, C-R-E-W. President Donald J. Trump will be afflicted by a steady flow of damaging information, constant new revelations, and an inability to avoid any conflict issues. The Donald Trump administration will be forced to defend illegal conduct in court. We will take him to court at any, all the time, every time. Powerful industries and interest group will see their influence wane and dark money will be a political liability in key states. Okay. Sounds sounds interesting, right? Note the first one. President Trump will be afflicted by a steady flow of damaging information, new revelations, and an inability to avoid conflict issues. Again, Clinton Foundation, anyone? Hillary Clinton, anyone? But you see what they're doing? How are they doing it? Well, let's move to Share Blue. Share Blue, again, part of the umbrella of the Brock organization, part of that umbrella. They're going to take back social media. In fact, they will delegitimize President Trump's presidency by emboldening the opposition and empowering the majority of Americans who oppose him. What they just said there is what's happening now. They mute the voices of the conservatives. They amplify the voices of the uh, of the fascists, the communists, and they create their own narrative. And they use they they use the uh, media as well, the corporate media as well. In, in fact, ShareBlue will become the de facto news outlet for opposition leaders and the grassroots. Now, folks, I'm giving you their game plan here. 
Trump allies will be forced to step down or change course due to news published by Sher Blue. So every time you see a story, Manafort, uh, Cohen, the amplification of those, think Sher Blue. Just think of the name, Sher Blue. Blue wave, Sher. Okay, anyway. Under pressure from Share Blue, Democrats will take more aggressive positions against Donald Trump, and they will Share Blue will achieve financial sustainability while diversifying content offerings and platforms. In other words, look, we got the we got the donor money to back us, and we're going to use it to uh, to uh, stifle free speech and to amplify ours. Top editorial and writing talent will leave competitors to join Share Blue. Yeah, we're going to buy up. We're going to buy people off with no morals to bring them into the into the flow into the gate. All right. But a, a main pillar of this, Media Matters for America, established 2004, the top watchdog against fake news and propaganda. You see, I told you fake news, that phrase, fake news, was going to have a special role in silencing your voice, my voice, and our voices. I've seen fake news on legal documents used to file against me that we are prop- propagating fake news. This by so-called conservative people. Yeah, okay. I believe that. But it's it's transforming the media landscape. They told us what they were going to do. Media Matters will continue their core mission of disarming right-wing what they call misinformation while leading the fight against the next generation of conservative disinformation. They're not, they're not just satisfied with, with shutting up, you know, this level that it's everything to come. And of course, isn't it interesting? We've got to stop fake news. We got, we got to stop it. It's all fake news. The proliferation of fake news and propaganda threatens this country's information ecosystem. Yeah. Really? Okay, because you know why? Because they think you and I are stupid. We can't figure out what's right, what's real, and what's not. But more importantly, not only do they think we're stupid, they don't want us asking questions. They don't want us asking about Las Vegas. They don't want us asking about anything. Here is the official story. You have any questions, and then you hear the click of the hammer being pulled back on a 357. Again, I'm speaking now with word pictures. Okay, as you know, to give you an example, I have to clarify that. Sadly. All right, so what what Media Matters is doing is they're silencing the right, amplifying the left, to hell with the rules. There are no rules anymore. Oh, how much, by the way, did you know this? The Conservative Media Research Center. Uh, you, you know what? I'm not even going to bring that up because uh, it, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, they talk about how Donald Trump, President Donald Trump uses his Twitter account to manipulate news cycles with lies. It's ridiculous. But their overreaching strategy, um, they feel that they've got to rescue journalism in in what they they describe as journalism. They've got to fight the rise of fake news, disinformation, active propaganda efforts, and then um, save an information ecosystem uh, from the extremism and climate of harassment. Uh, serial misinformers and right-wing propagandists inhabiting everything from social media and to the highest levels of government will be exposed. In other words, everyone's going to have an opposition research file on them. Internet and social media platforms, Google, Facebook, and such will no longer uncritically and without consequence host and enrich fake news and sites and propagandists. You get the idea. Did you know, by the way, that Media Matters pitched a hissy fit President Donald Trump was actually f- telephoning like Fox News and such. Media Matters says, no, 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 you can't do that. 
You can you you not allowed to do that. In fact, I believe they sued him in court because they said that President Donald Trump could appear on more news shows. He conducted sixty nine phone uh, tele- telephone interviews in the first sixty nine days of twenty sixteen alone, and, and he could avoid being confronted by images and interview or interviewers showing him lies for what they are. So they 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 said no, we can't do this. They lobbied, ultimately got CBS and NBC to say, okay, we're not going to take the president's phone calls. In other words, we're not going to interview him by phone. Because they felt that Donald Trump's ability to control the news cycle from the comfort of his own home was, was, a, was a bad thing. That, no, no, it's, that's, no, no, we got to bring him in. The stupidity of what we're seeing here. Media Matters encourages good journalism. Yeah, according to who? Snopes? <laughs> okay. So some of these things I've highlighted. And uh, the, the neutralization, neutralize government disinformation. Let me translate that to uh, for you. Simple. Neutralize government disinformation. Well, l- let me just cite this. What happens when the most dangerous source of misinformation is no longer right, right-wing right radio hosts on, or Fox News? What happens? They've got to silence everybody. They've got to silence you, and they've got to silence me. You know, that social credit score that, that's that's taking off in China, that's coming here. And the only way they can win... Folks, the only way that they that they that that will that will survive in the United States is if we allow it, and I personally will not allow it. I will not accept it, and I will not allow it for me. Because what it, it what's it's the infrastructure set up, the social networking social score. Don't like your position on Facebook or Twitter? Okay, you ain't going to fly in the plane. You're not going to use whatever. That, that's what's coming to this country if we let it. But if we, if we fight back and say no, no, we're not going to, no, we're not, no, 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 we're not going to, no. Look down where you're standing. See that line there? If there's no line, you can draw a line. I'm done. In fact, as a matter of fact, I'm going to push that line back against you. These are communists through and through. These are these are people who want to destroy the country. These pukes from Antifa and these other other organizations who are attacking our police officers. Look, these people will run from a fight. They will run from you if you just say, uh-uh. Ain't going to happen, young man. And that's what we need to do. I just want to take a brief side note here. You know, there is something called, something that was dreamt up, shall we say, because that's the only way I can describe it. Dreamt up, stochastic terrorism. Stochastic terrorism which is described as the use of mass communications to incite random actors to carry out violent or terrorist acts that are statistically predictable but individually unpredictable. In short, remote control murder by lone wolf. Now, let me explain something to you. Here is what media matters, what the communist left and others, and you'll notice that many... Okay, uh, let me stop. Media Matters, the Communist Left, and others. The reason or the pretext that is being used to, to stop programs like this, stop programs like the Hagman Report and others like it, Alex Jones, is this. And they're going after Hannity and others. We talk about Pizzagate. Now, I'm using this as an example. We say, okay, there is a child sex trafficking problem. 
And oh, by the way, look at the emails from Podesta. Now, by sheer, just by the sheer mention of that, and folks, I can document this because I have this in legal documents filed against me. So I've, I, so I'm, I and others, including and especially Alex Jones, have been accused or being accused of stochastic terrorism, which means that just by the sheer mention of this problem, we are responsible for that idiot that went into Comet Ping Pong or whatever and sh- took a shot somewhere. Re- remember that? It is us that are responsible for that behavior. And it's interesting. This is from a website that started. It's got it's a website it has one post, one story. That's it, just one. Back in 2011. And it's about this. The us being the people responsible for inciting random but statistically predictable but individually unpredictable acts of violence. And that's the way that they are trying to get us shut down. Okay? That we are the reason for uh, whatever. Uh, the, the, and I use that example of the guy going into uh, that pizza shop in Washington, D.C. and taking a shot, supposedly, and supposedly in quotation marks, investigating Pizzagate, which is totally bizarre and insane and not even rational. But you watch. You watch. There will be an attempt to, to hold us criminally liable for speaking about a topic, an issue, a matter, without even the remotest intent to incite anything except education and information. But we'll, we are being blamed for this violence and will be held criminally liable in this country. That's what's happening today. We're on the front lines of this. And in the share blue and the, the media matters share blue, they're manipulating Facebook, for example, and others. If they can't, uh, those they, they cannot suppress fully, they'll, they'll, they'll cite, they'll go after criminally or go after civilly. Civil is much more effective, by the way. And that's what they're doing right now. That's what they're doing to Alex Jones. That's what they're doing to us. That's just one attempt. This is stuff you don't see in the background because we can't talk about it. Look, it's going to get much worse before it gets better. But don't you dare give up. Don't you dare say, I, I'm, I've, I've had enough because we're all in this together. And I will fight for you. I will fight until my last breath for you. Because I'm fighting for not just you, but for me and for the future of our nation. We can't afford to give up. Never give up. When you think you've given it all, take a nap, whatever, walk the dog, but get back in the fight and stay in the fight. Because worse is yet to come. They're going after Donald Trump Jr., Mark my words, they're going after Donald Trump by any means necessary, and they're coming after all of us. The question is, are you prepared? Well, thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, please share it on your social networking. May God bless each and every one of you. Have a great day. Seriously, have a great day.
The Doug Hagman Radio Show is brought to you by The Hagman Report. Tune in to The Hagman Report weekdays, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information, go to HagmanReport.com. That's HagmanReport.com.